Joined now by Leanne Williamson, South Dakota volleyball head coach after a successful season last year, another one, your third straight Summit League tournament title. Uh, last year you dominated and you won the regular season and Summit League tournament title. 29-4, and four, you think about everything that transpired last season and all the success that you had uh, getting into the NCAA tournament. How can you build on that coming into this year? Well, I think, um, you know, one, I think it's always fun to look back on. You know, at this point in time, it seems like forever ago. Um, but I, I think just the expectation that our players have, um, you know, in terms of finding ways to have success, I think is the biggest thing that we can draw from. Um, you know, the experiences that they have gone through, you know, both good and bad, um, all set them up for this season again. And this year is a very different year for us um, in terms of, um, personnel and, and losing obviously some key pieces of our team that have been staples for the last few years. Um, but again, their their experiences, whether they were on the court or not, um, they saw the team, the program, find ways to have success in those moments still. So we've drawn a lot from that still, but at the same time, catering it to this group, you know, and what's important for them. And um, I think they've handled it really, really well. And you talk about some of the key pieces lost, uh, primarily Elizabeth Junkie who was the nation's leader in kills last year by a large margin. I think it was 80 kills between first and second place. Uh, a dominant player and obviously so unfortunate the injury that she uh, sustained in the NCAA tournament against Houston. Can you talk about her legacy and uh, you know what she did for this program? Yeah, um, well, you know, when we went through the recruiting process with her, you know, one of the things that she kept coming back to is she wanted to make an impact, you know, and she obviously did that here, um, you know, playing as a freshman and then helping us win um, a lot of matches, some championships along the way. And last year, I think, again, a little bit of a different season, and she had to take a little bit more of an offensive load than what she had previously, even though she still took a lot of swings before that. Um, and she handled it really well. You know, she was playing some of her best volleyball, but um, she was surrounded by great keys, too. You know, and I think that's what, at, at times, I think people forget that. You know, having a, a fifth-year libero in Lolo, having Amy Adams, who had three years of experience, and then, you know, obviously everybody else still around that had a lot of success as well. Um, but she wanted to make an impact, and she did that you know I think she raised the level at you know at times of, of South Dakota volleyball and some of it was um, you know with still within the team you know what it meant to work hard what it meant to kind of reach that next level um, what it meant to compete you know and I, I think she's left a, a lot of that um, within this program and she continues to help you know and that's what's been kind of fun she's in a different role now but um, I know our players trust her and I think she's going to be able to give some good feedback to them from a player's perspective just because she's so fresh out of it. And we saw her emerge as a star over the past three seasons. Obviously, you mentioned Lolo Weidman and what she did here uh, in that libero position. Um, who are we, so some of the players that you maybe think are going to have some breakout seasons for this program? Yeah, you know, it's it's been a different uh, different preseason. We've talked about that a little bit. Um, but it's also been a, a really fun preseason. And, and part of it is we don't fully know our starting lineup yet. You know, we're only a few days away here from, um, you know, first serve after our exhibition. And I thought maybe it would clear it up a little bit. And I don't think it really did. I think it muddied it even a little bit more. Um, but I think that just goes to show the depth that we have on our roster right now. Um, you know, I think Elena and Cameron right now are fighting for that, the, the libero position. But that group as a whole is very deep you know and we have different people that can step in and um, do some really good things on the defensive end and I think that's something that people notice about our team um, when they do watch us on the floor um, you know in the setter position I think all three of our setters right now are doing fantastic things and it, again it's a different type of offensive system than what we've seen um, or from what maybe some other people have seen us run in these last few seasons. So um, they're not making it easy on us, that's for sure, but there's such a great group of people that have supported each other through it, even though we are competing every single day and they all wanna be on the floor in some capacity. So um, we just feel very grateful that we have such a good group that also can see the bigger picture and make sure that we're continuing to put the team first. And it's a good problem to have as a coach, knowing, okay, we have people who can be on this first rotation mm -hmm. uh, going into this season. You look at the schedule, Iowa State, DePaul, uh, you're starting off in a, in a strong way. As you prepare for some of these bigger names that you're gonna play this year, uh, you know, what is the message to the team going into those non-conference games? 
I mean, it, it stays consistent for us, and that's really take care of our side of the floor. You know, we obviously have our scouting reports. We talk about tendencies, what we need to expect. Are there certain things we need to take away? But in the end, we have to play really well on our side. You know, we have to serve and pass at a high level. Um, we have to run the offense that we want to run. You know, not that we are forced into running a different type of offense, which I think will be the challenge um, when we are playing somebody on the other side of the net. Uh, but in the end, it, it's consistently get a little bit better every single day. You know, be the best version of ourselves as individuals, as a program. And if we're doing that, we are getting better match to match week to week so that when we hit our next benchmark, you know, at the end of this preseason, right before conference starts, we know exactly where we're at and we're better than we, where we are now. We're obviously a few months away from it, but you look out here and this will be the host site of the Summit League tournament this year. How nice is it to know that it's going to be back here in Vermilion? I mean, it's an incredible feeling. I, it's hard to fully describe. You know, I think other teams that have been there can understand what it what it means and what it looks like to be able to play in front of our fans and sleep in our own beds and have our families nice and close. Um, but we're we're looking forward to that. It's something we've talked about. You know, that obviously it's ultimate goal, right? But we want the dog pile. You know, at the end of the season on our home floor, and um, I think it helps keep us focused at times of just this is what we're working towards. And when things get hard. Um, um, we can draw back from experiences again of we know the heart is worth it, you know, and in the end to be able to to hold the trophy up, um, you know, hopefully make it to that next that, that next step of the NCAA tournament. Um, that those are our ultimate goals. And obviously then we have steps along the way to help us get there. Well, we look forward to being back here uh, in November for the Summit League tournament and can't wait to see what happens this year. Thank you. Appreciate it.